ほらもうちょっと詰めうんうんそうDon't Toy With Me Nagatoro is the second installment in the Please Make An Anime Out Of This Manga trilogy and features a will they want they teasing tsundere flat chested heroine that uses that weird Japanese bow. As I was watching the series, I felt a chill in the air. While Nagatoro kept teasing senpai, I sensed something familiar towards the whole vibe of the series. The characters, the plot, the setting, something was too familiar. Had I watched this before? Maybe read the manga? Is this anime maybe ripping off another story? I couldn't put my finger on it. But as this scene rolled in... <laughs> it dawned on me. Dude, am I watching porn? It can be, right? This is a 15 year old... Yeah, I will have to look it up. After googling it, I finally found the reason for this series' vague degeneracy. Turns out, the creator started his career as a fucking hentai mangaka. The whole series is framed in the same way as hentai, but with a more realistic escalation. Instead of having one character tease another for a little bit and then abruptly going at it, they just awkwardly move on. But is this anime anything more than a perverted back and forth? <laughs> <laughs> this series is about how much power a girl can hold over a boy. Senpai is extremely insecure, getting rattled even by the idea of a confrontational girl walking towards him. Also, Big Simp. Nagatoro, a sadistic demon of a girl, quickly takes advantage of his nature and terrorizes him without mercy. Whether that's by physically assaulting him or sexually harassing him, Nagatoro will always find a way to traumatize Senpai. That's what I thought of the series after watching the first episode. However, as you watch further ahead, you start noticing that Nagatoro is only interested in teasing him because she's infatuated with him, and that she's equally vulnerable to his actions as he is to hers. The only reason she's the one that has the upper hand is one important difference. Confidence. Nagatoro is able to hold up a thin veil of confidence because she knows that Senpai is inclined to being attracted to her. She is aware of the effects she has on him. Senpai, on the other hand, is oblivious, just like most adolescent boys. He finds it unthinkable that she might be just as interested to him as he is to her. <laughs> Being a sadistic little imp aside, Nagatoro's behavior is partly excused by the fact that she can't express her affection for him by simply hanging out, so she just pesters him and keeps him safe from other people's bullying, even though the people bullying him are almost exclusively her two best friends, who unlike Nagatoro, are two unadulterated pieces of shit that just like seeing him suffer, whereas Nagatoro is using her strong influence over Senpai to get closer to him and help him toughen up. Her friends Yoshi and Gamochan are using society's inability of recognizing girl bullies to pull some truly detestable shit. No matter how playfully the anime goes along with it. Fucking assholes, man! But yeah. Underneath all this porn riddled abuse, there's a very sweet romance between two character types that make for a great combo. The comedy is pretty satisfying and sometimes even great. If you liked Love is War, chances are that you are gonna like this one as well. Let's hope the Komi-san adaptation follows suit. Thanks for watching. But yeah, underneath all this porn riddled abuse, there's a very sweet. There's a. There's a very sweet.